What's up, everybody? This is all from the phone. Sorry if I sound a little tired. It's just early. <laughs> just want to show you guys uh, this install of these Power Sport brakes. Um, they came online for 150 bucks uh, on eBay. Uh, original price is like something around three to four hundred dollars for these brakes. They're slotted, not drilled. I don't like drilled rotors um, because I've seen them crack before. Slotted don't tend to do that and the slots on there prevent uh, the heat anyways and they're a little more grabby um, <clears throat> but if you see these are like zinc gold uh, plated type rotors um, and then they're ceramic pads to replace the old pads I'm probably gonna eventually do um, I want to do uh, braided lines um, and I might paint the, the brake caliper, but what uh, I've been wanting to do is get new calipers anyway, so probably not going to paint them yet. Um, but if I end up getting some sort of motivation, I'll end up painting them too. But just for now, I'm going to put these rotors and pads. I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, now. All right, so for this brake job, this is pretty much the essentials that you're going to need. I have a little ratchet set. Uh, and also have a ratchet wrench set um, these come in handy if you guys don't have one of these these save your life a lot um, typically on a uh, Japanese car you're gonna most common sockets and uh, sizes are gonna be 10 mils uh, your 12 mil your 14 millimeter uh, and sometimes 18 mil um, and also for Toyota, their lug nut sizes are 21. 21. And I have a gun um, to take these off. Let's see here. This gun costs like about 150 bucks, but it is so worth the money, man. Um, I also have a charger over there for it. Uh, I had a set before, um, and this Ryobi One Plus. Um, set that I bought it came with two batteries and a charger so all I had to buy was the gun itself um, so it was a little bit cheaper but I do know that if you buy the gun uh, and a charger with two batteries it's more expensive than just buying a set that comes with this a flashlight a saw and a sawzall um, and two batteries and a charger that's cheaper buying it that way than actually buying just two batteries and a charger so if you want to buy a set and a gun it's cheaper that way so I will start this off and you guys will see how this works this gun works pretty good the 21 mil and we'll go to the car alright just to show you how um, these come off this is one handed, so let's see how hard it's gonna be. Saw that? Pretty easy. This gun works like magic. Alright, I'm gonna take this off and then keep going. Guys, real quick, uh, just to show you, um, these rotors have a lot of buildup around here, as you can see. Usually, this is not supposed to be all caked up like that. It's, you're supposed to be seeing some sort of plane or like a little line that goes around here um this car apparently looks like it was from up north or the beach or something like that that's why it's got all this caked up there and all this rust so it'll be a pain in the butt to take these rotors off i'm gonna have to be beating on it for forever if uh, i didn't do anything about this so i just get some brake cleaner put it around here and let it sit for a little bit what works best is rust repellent um like PB Blaster or some, something like that is usually what works best. But I don't have that stuff right now. I just have some brake cleaner. So I'm going to spray that on there, let it sit, uh, and continue taking off the rest of uh, the brakes. All right, guys. So to take these calipers off, before I take any caliper off, I like to stick a screwdriver in between here and pull on it. Okay? Pull and push. That way, the piston starts to move back get a good grip there and you'll feel the piston moving back like I can feel it right now and that way you see look it's already starting to get loose 
that way when you pull these two bolts off here and you take this down you're not gonna have to be prying it off I've seen a lot of people beat on it this way stick a screwdriver here and just beat on it this way uh, when they're taking it off that's a no-no you can break stuff like that so just get a screwdriver pull back on it it'll loosen up like this and then you can loosen these two bolts up okay these two bolts on this car is a 14 millimeter um, and once you have those off I'll show you how to take off this bracket okay all right all right guys just to show you how easy it is to take off with those bolts out look one finger didn't have to beat it off or nothing that's because I took that screwdriver and pressed it in between here and squished this piston back before I even took it off um, telling you that's gonna make your life a whole lot easier doing it that way um, and you don't ruin anything so the next I'm gonna be taking off is this bolt here and this bolt up here and that's gonna take this bracket off and I can take this rotor off and I'll show you that process real quick I was I forgot to tell you something these bolts tend to be on there pretty tight so if you saw the tools that I had out I have a half inch drive and usually a breaker bar is too big to get behind there so what I did uh, this is off of like an exercise pull-up machine that I wasn't using I took off one of the pipes and made a small like extender pipe and this is gonna go in here to make my ratchet a little bit longer to give myself more leverage to break those loose um, the reason I don't have like a huge extender on there because if you put too much torque on these uh, you can break them off right here at the at the nub so if you don't go too long with the with the extension uh, you can save yourself uh, a ratchet even though I've broken ratchets before even with this um, but the craftsman I just take them back to give me a new one and that's pretty much it so I'll take these bolts off, and like I said, this is going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. I take this wherever I go on whatever job I do, because I don't ever fight with bolts. Um, it's retarded to fight with bolts when you can get them off in like two seconds. All right, I'll get this off. So this is a 17 millimeter, and I'm going to be using just a regular ratchet. I thought I was going to have to use my half inch, but I'll just use my regular one with a breaker bar, and just with one arm... That's it. One arm. If I did this with a one arm without this extender, it would never happen. Just to show you guys that that works. Hey okay, guys, so I got that off. Um, completely off. I rest this on top of here just so it's not hanging down. Um, now, best way to attack this is just to spray it on straight forward. Let it sit for a little bit. You're gonna get a hammer and you're gonna hit here around these studs this could be a little tricky since i am going to take these rotors off anyways and i'm not going to use them I'm not going to be worried about hitting them here but if you're reusing rotors you have to hit here okay can't be hitting on here because you're gonna make huge grooves and you're gonna have squeaky brakes so um if you're reusing a rotor hit right here okay you just got to be very careful with these studs sometimes i put uh, lug nuts on here just to protect it but honestly I've done this so many times that I'm pretty good with swinging a hammer um, and these are really not gonna care about if I hit here because I'm replacing them so um, like I said get some brake cleaner spray it around here or PB blaster PB blaster would be best if you're gonna go to the store and buy stuff because uh, it'll eat through that rust and grime and gut and nastiness that's there um, and it'll be a lot easier for you to take off. Like right now, I'm pulling on that pretty hard and it's not coming loose. And that should be able to just slide off and slide back on. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get my hammer and beat on here real quick and get this off. All right guys, remember I told you this thing was rusty? Look at all that rust that came from me beating on this rotor. Yeah, they're rusty. And look at all that. I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's a lot of rust. So. And in between here, I'm going to take some brake cleaner and spray all that off so it's nice and clean when I go back in there. Um, so, it took a little bit of beating to get it off. Just like I said, it was rusty. If you can see, I hit it a couple times 
on the outside just to make it wobble a little bit. But like I said, if you're going to reuse these, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to hit it here and stay away from the studs. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the only way to take them off. So, like I said, just be careful when you're doing it. And if you're going to put new rotors on it, who the hell cares if you're beating around there? All right. On with the process. Okay, so when you're putting these back together, it's always good to grease these slides that are here. These are pretty good. Um, they're pretty greased up. Um, if not, you can just buy your some brake grease. It comes like little packages like this. Uh, I have some brake ones. I just grabbed the wrong one. This one's for a spark plug socket. But they come in little packets like that. You can just take these out and grease these slides. Um, and I always put some grease in here and in here where the pad is going to sit. Like right in here. These little grooves. And I like to put some grease on the back of the pad. This is an old pad, but it'll work. You put some grease on the back of the pad. Um, that way you have no squeaks when you're going down the road. All right. All right, guys, when you're putting these rotors back on, another little trick uh, to get the bracket back on, because if you didn't have this on here, it'd be wobbling around everywhere. This would be coming out this way when you're trying to put this bracket on uh, with the pad set on. Just get a lug nut, put it on there, tighten it, so that way this doesn't move much. So that way, you, when you're going back on there with the bracket, you're not going to have this rotor flopping around, and you're fighting it just to get the bolt for the bracket in there, okay? So a little trick, just get a lug nut, put it on there, keep this nice and tight. Some of these come with like little screws in the rotor, and that's what they're for, just to keep them on there so that you can mess with this. This one doesn't come with those screws, so if you if yours doesn't, just use a lug nut. All right. All right, guys, now to push these pistons back after you have the bracket on there with the pads and nice and greased up, as you can see, I greased it right here on the back of the pad where it slides into the bracket right there and the same thing on the back side. Um, now to get these pushed back like you saw before when I was pulling on it with the um, with the screwdriver when I first started, you see how it's almost all the way in. Um, so there's not much more to go. Uh, you get an old pad, you put it up against here, and then they sell a special tool Grab it real quick. Here. You sell the special tool where you put it in here and you spin that end and it pushes it back. Pretty simple, right? If you don't have that, these will just do fine. Uh, will do just fine, I'm sorry. Um, get yourself some really big pliers, open them up all the way, and you can have enough space to just clamp down and push, and it'll work just fine. I've done it like that before. Sometimes I don't even like to use a tool because it takes more time. So I use my trusty pliers. That's about it. All right, guys, I'm going to do that real quick, and I'll keep going on the process. All right, guys, I forgot to mention these are called channel lock pliers. You see, because they have obviously different channels that so you can make them bigger or smaller. So channel lock pliers. Get them at any sort of hardware store, your AutoZone, discount auto part, whatever. Um, so yeah, some big old channel locks. I use the channel locks for this one, and it goes back just fine. I sprayed this down with some brake clean that's brake clean, not brake fluid. So nobody freak out on the video. All right. All right, guys, this is what it should look like once everything's put back together. When you're done, just remove the lug nut and put your tire back on. Same process for both sides, so I'm not going to record myself doing it on the same, on the other side, doing the same thing on the other side. Um, so, once you got that off, and like I said, look, see how that's moving around? If you were doing this bracket while this is moving around, you could do it, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Once you pump the brakes, uh, this will all tighten up. So remember, once you're done doing a brake job, you always pump the brakes before you start the car try to move the car because if you don't guess what you're gonna hit the brake and it's gonna go to the floor and you're probably gonna run into something so pump the brakes get these brakes nice and tight and then you can drive the car and I'll show you guys how to do the rears because I did buy a set of rear brakes so I'll show you how to do the rears it's pretty much this, the same thing same process but I'll show you what it looks like okay so that's the finished product 
that's what it looks like through the wheel looks kind of cool with the gold sticking like that in the slots um, let's go to the back alright so this is what you got in the back of a Coral XRS these are pin style um, they're pin style uh, calipers where this pin goes through the two pads um, and holds them in place. Now, typically to get these off of here, you have to beat them off. Um, so, it could be a little bit of a pain, but it shouldn't be that bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a, bun a bunch of brake cleaner around here to get these off. And look at these rotors, these were a lot worse. You see how it's like all rusted up? This is what was squeaking when I was going backwards uh, out of my driveway. I was kept hearing like a squeak and it was coming from the rear. Um, oh, also, you see my TN springs there? I don't know if I talked about it in the front, but those are the TN springs on stock shocks. Um, rides really well. Haven't had any problems yet. So, I'm going to start the process. Alright guys, so for these, it's the same exact thing as the front. You want to get a screwdriver to push back on this. So this is uh, decompresses back here so that when you're taking this off it comes a lot easier um, now on some cars these will not go back without a special tool uh, it's a little brick uh, it's like about you know this big it's like a, literally like a little brick with little um, prongs sticking out of it they go into the holes of this piston and you have to twist it in uh, so on some vehicles, this one is not like that way. I do have the special tool, but I'm not going to use it on this because there's no need. So I just wanted to warn you guys. So if you're pushing on this and it's not going back, it's probably because it's a twist kind. And you're going to have to fight the caliper off anyways. But there's proper ways to do it without beating it off. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So once you push this back, you see how far I've pushed that back? It's not even touching the the uh, pad anymore pads moving around in there you take off these two bolts not this one up here the back one is a 14 mil and back here same thing 14 millimeter okay you take those two off and on this particular one there's no real bracket everything just comes off uh, uh, together um, it makes it a little bit easier and then we're going to be um, taking the pads out once everything's off and reinstalling these pins with the pads on there. All right, we'll show you how to do that. All right guys, so same process for the rear. You're gonna be spraying some brake cleaner or PB Blaster around here. Like I said before, PB Blaster is the best uh, just to get this rust to break down so that when you're hitting the um, rotor, this will come out. Now, quick tip, do not have the e-brake put on because you will never get this off. The e-brake on this car is on the inside of this. Um, this kind of works like a drum uh, on a regular car. So it's like a drum and rotor style. Um, the e-brake is what uses the drum and the regular brakes are what use the pad. So if you have the e-brake on, the pads on the inside of this are gonna be out like this and it's gonna be holding this tight. So you see, I can move that uh, pretty easily. If you have the e-brake on, it's gonna be nice and tight. You're gonna beat on this forever and it won't come off. So just a quick tip, I've seen somebody do that in another video and I was screaming at the TV going, hello, e-brake. Um, so, so yeah, don't look like a fool. Take the e-brake off, beat it off, it'll come right off. But if you have the e-brake on there, you're gonna be beating on that thing until you break an arm. So quick tip for that. All right, and then I'll show you guys how to take these pins out. All right guys, so these pins to take out for the brake pads, um, they run through this side, through the front of the brake pad, so you have to beat them out through the back. Um, typically what I do for these uh, is something very simple. I just get a small little screwdriver, put it on the back of the tip, and then just hit it with a hammer. You shouldn't have to hit it that hard. They're not in there with that much pressure, so, um, you know, just slight little taps. It'll start coming through on the other side. You might be able to just, you know, put this in between here and then pry it out or just yank them out. 
And like I said, some grease or some PB blaster would help to take these out, to take those out. All right, guys. So one thing I forgot to tell you about are these pins. Um, before taking these out and beating them out this way, you have to take these pins out. Okay. These pins run like so. This long side goes under here, and this little short side runs through this hole. This runs hooks up underneath here, and this other side right here that's long like that runs through this hole when it's in here so that this doesn't slide out. Once you have those out, it slides right out. See how they're just coming out? So, remember to take these off. Remember how they go on there because it is kind of confusing. But once you have those out, it slides right out. Continue with the process. Guys, and then the same process, I'm going to put a pad in between here and then squeeze it with the channel locks. And then back in with the pins. Beat this off, put the new rotor on. Put everything back together. And that's it. I'll show you what, it's look, what it looks like when I'm done. Alright guys, just to show you what this looks like. Looks like a regular shoe setup. Uh, these are your uh, shoes for your e-brake. And so when you pull up on the e-brake, this extends out this way and it stops the car from moving. That's pretty much how it works. There's a lot of brake dust in there, so I'm going to clean it out with some brake cleaner and then put the new rotor on there. I uh, just wanted to show you what it looked like and how it's set up. Alright, that's about it. Also to show you, there is an adjustment for the e-brake on here. Um, and there's like a little cover that you have to take off the old one to put onto this one. So don't disregard the old rubber cover. Yep, there you go. This is what it's going to look like once the pad is in there. Um, I grease these bolts because, or not bolts, but the pins that go through because it's a lot easier. They got some rust and stuff like that, so I just grease them up, push them through. Um, now these clips that come on here, okay, there's a bigger clip, uh, that one goes in one hole on one end of the pin, and one goes on the other hole on the other end of the pin. Then this clip slides over, this goes over the top of that larger pin, over the top, and then through this hole here, and it clips onto there. And this goes underneath this pin, and holds on to the pin underneath. So there's no hole it goes through, it just goes right underneath. And then this side is simple, just goes underneath one side and then straight through the other hole in the middle. And then hold that in place. Keep these nice and separated so that when you put it back onto the rotor, um, it'll be a lot easier. And that's what pretty much these are up for, to hold them into place. That's pretty much it. Alright guys, so this is it. Um, everything's put back on nice and tight. That's what the rotor looks like. So that's how you do front and rear brakes um, on a 2006 Toyota Corolla XRS. Um, if you follow these steps by step, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. I'll just make a short little video to show you what it looks like with the wheels and tires on um, from a side angle. But other than that, move on with the process. All right guys, this is what it looks like all done up. Looks pretty cool with the gold picking out the back like that. And you see the slots that's pretty much it man front and rear brakes on a 06 corolla hope you guys enjoyed the video thumbs up if you did don't thumbs down and peace out